I am Joy Zicke, inventor of the revolution, and wow, that 360 with the reflex was super easy. If you've ever tried a 360 without the reflex, you know how challenging it can be. Let's give one a try. Wow, I didn't quite make that. Let me see if I can come up with a couple excuses why. Number one, for a 360, you really need light, smooth conditions, zero to two miles an hour. And this park is anything but that. The, con the typical conditions and the conditions today are zero to six miles an hour and it's very turbulent. So imagine flying your Revolution upwind. You have a six mile an hour wind blowing it towards you, which means you've got to run that way six miles an hour just to hit zero. Then you're gonna to have to add a couple miles an hour just to keep it flying. So basically you need to run backwards at eight or 10 miles an hour in a circle to make a 360 work. I'm getting too old for that. Once I flew the 360 using the reflex, I realized how easy it was and I asked myself, why would anyone ever do a 360 without the reflex? Here's a few tips and tricks on how to do a 360 with your Revolution reflex. Okay, for the old school 360, basically what you're doing is you're taking your rev, you're flying it out to the edge of the wind and then you're trying to fly it upwind. The only way to get it to go upwind is to generate enough pressure on the sail to get it to keep flying. So as you come up here, you have to run downwind. At this point, you're exactly dead upwind, and so if that wind is blowing this way, you've got to have that wind speed running this way plus enough to keep it flying. So that's where that eight or 10 mile an hour run comes in to get it to come around. Then once you get to this point, the oncoming wind picks it up again and you finish your 360. For the reflex model, what you basically do is you fly it up into a float. From the float, you pull it into a glide and you get it to glide across. It floats on its own and it flies on its own. In fact, the lines can go slack while you're doing this. It flies downwind and then you recapture it. To practice this, we're gonna take it up pretty much overhead and practice that tug and bring it across. And then we're gonna, gradually gonna bring it up and out to the side farther out and get a bigger and bigger glide to get it to come around. This is what it looks like on the field. All right, once you have that basic float up, overhead, tug, and fly downwind, you push it out a little bit further, fly it slightly out to the side, pull, and get a little bit of side flight to it as it flies downwind. That tug is very important. If you tug it too hard, you'll just yank it around, you'll cause it to rise up. Basically, you're setting your wing into a gliding mode, and you need to softly release it and let it fly. After you finish that, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fly it further out to the side in a float. As it's going out in a float, you walk, start to walk in a circular path. So your rev is flying in the circular path to the outer edge. You're walking in this opposite circle on the inside, and you guys are switching positions. Now your revolution is moving upwind, but it's gliding. At this point, you give it a little tug on that top line. It'll pull it across. And you, as it flies across and heads downwind, you can continue walking across and walking upwind. And that's how you get this 360 motion. This is what it looks like. Okay, that was amazing. That was uh, a 360 style. We took it out to the edge. As the rev flew up and around, I started jogging down and around. We started doing our little circle. I gave it a tug, it flew across and went down one. I just continued jogging up. I had to dodge the lines because the lines were floating down in front of me. So that was really what I was running around with the lines. And then I caught it right on. What's amazing about it is that is the Reflex Double X Tarantula and the winds are blowing about six to eight miles an hour. So that would have been impossible to do a standard 360. Let's take it to the next level. And what I wanna do here is it's more about controlling that glide path 
uh, how far upwind it goes, how hard you pull it, how fast it is moving because the, one of the great things about the float is it can float very slowly which gives you a lot of time to position yourself. Secondly, most of the time I'm not even watching the rev. I already know it's floating and I saw from its launch which way it was going. So now I'm focused on avoiding the lines and moving around in a circle and getting ready to catch it at the end. So let's see if we can get a couple more in here. The fly and glide reflex tricks are a lot of fun. So I challenge you, pick up a revolution and let's see what the new reflex fly and glide trick is gonna be. Join us at Revolution Club 38 to learn all the basics all the way up to advanced and beyond. Check us out at revkites.com, hit the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you on the field.